denn auf das Denken stand der Psychedirk here. Coming back on here this weekend, Saturday morning, and just sharing a few records I have acquired since then. And hope you guys enjoyed my last video. It seems like it's kind of gained a little popularity because it's kind of, it's a popular topic right now and I'm really enjoying the thread. I haven't seen a whole lot of videos, but it's just an interesting topic nonetheless. Um, you know, I kind of surprised some folks, you know, sharing a couple punk records and like I said, I had my punk phase. I was listening to stuff like Agnostic Front, you know, Fear. Um, what's the other ones? Uh, Agent Orange, you know, The Descendants. So just kind of all over the place, you know. Joy Division had a little bit of post-punkness to it. Television, you know. I had like my little uh, tiny MP3 player, which I still have, and I think it has some of that music on there yet. Um, it's like, you know, over 10 years old, but the files are still on there. And I'm just kind of uh, getting back into the punk realm a little bit. Not like I'm going to become like a whole, you know, punk of all trades, but <laughs> I do have one punk record in the stack. And this video is going to be a little different because um, every record I'm going to be sharing here are all from different countries of origin, except for like two different groups, I guess, but... And funny enough, I found three of these in Lincoln, so uh, let's dive in. So this first one, this is one I've been needing to track down a long time. I just figured to myself, well, a reissue will pop up, and it'll be 20 bucks all day long. That uh, turns out not the case, so I had to pop on this. This is Virgin by Traffic Sound. This is a reissue from, I think, 2011-ish, 2013 maybe. Um... Very good sound quality, great pressing of this. Um, just happened to be listening to it one night on one of my walks. So it was kind of like a, you know, kind of nearing dusk, which I think was, you know, oftentimes when I listen to records, sometimes like the time of day or the weather kind of affects the mood a little bit. And this one was hitting the spot that evening. I mean, especially the third track on here, which was really, because uh, it had been a while since I heard it, really wanted me to go and grab this. This was the track Yellow Sea Days, which uh, concludes side one. It's almost like a nine minute track. For the longest time, I thought it was like two or three different tracks. Um, to come to find out it's only one track because it kind of concludes one segment and you go into this whole other section, this middle part, and then it kind of goes back and it's more sound collage with this like acoustic background, you know, backing to it. And just really compelled me to get this. But my favorite track on here has always been Jew's Caboose. Uh, the opener on side two. It's got this really awesome, you know, Latin rhythmic section going on. Nice fuzz dropping, dropping in the mix. And, you know, you get a real good sense of, like, that Peruvian style. You know, it's just all, almost like you're being reeled into that culture, you know. So it's super cool. And then the... Uh, I think it's the second to last track, Mesh Kalina, was uh, issued as a single in Peru and kind of became a, you know, minor hit for the country. Minor or major, I don't know, but it became a pretty well-known song either way. And they had, I think, maybe two more records after this, um, or maybe one prior to this. I think this is their follow-up album, but it's definitely their most recognized. I think this is featured in... Uh, Richard Morton Jack book as well. So uh, definitely psychedelic. You get a lot of hazy atmospheres and 
you know, definitely on the folk tip, but also, you know, rocking at the same time and very much soaked in that Latin flavor. So check it out and get the reissue if you can. They're kind of uh, seeming to get pretty scarce, at least, you know, for me. I'm just kind of tired of paying like 35, 40 bucks for a single reissue, you know. Um, so I'm going to kind of show these in the way I acquired them. So this is a band, like I said, back on the punk subject. This is a band I never really dove into, but one of the songs on my MP3 I downloaded because I just kind of wanted to get a little bit of a sense of what the band was like. Um, was the track Rooters by Wire. So I picked up an original pressing, US press of Wire uh, Pink Flag. I just saw this uh, posted online on the uh, on a Facebook group and I just hadn't tracked it down. Um, you just don't see these things pop up every day and this doesn't have the insert. Apparently it had a lyric insert, but this is about as clean as they get, man. Um, very clean copy. Got this one from uh, Lefty's Records, which oftentimes he has some great prices on some stuff, you know, even if it's in clean shape. It's got great deals on lots of records, so. Um, yeah, I just kind of a, again, a spur of the moment thing. I was kind of like, let's just give this a shot, even though it is, you know, about 50 bucks. Let's just uh, try this one out. And I was a first time listener for this one, and so far I can say confidently that this is a pretty strong record for what it is. Um, I've listened to their second album a little bit, and it sounds like there's a lot more fans of like their later stuff, which became a little more atmospheric and moody in spots, a little more post-punk. Um, whereas this one, a little more savage sounding, um, but yet kind of on the artsy side, you know, it's got a little more edge to it. But yet, um, you know, you still have a lot of like one to two minute tracks, um, you know, very fast moving uh, track listing. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too educated on their background. So, you know, pardon me if I get anything wrong, but um, seems to be a pretty influential record for what it is. Um, it's got the warning sticker, which, well, it's not even a sticker. It's stamped on there. But uh, yeah, for how clean it is, um, it's pretty uh, pretty cool to own. So we'll see how long it lasts in the collection, but uh, stoked to uh, investigate, invest some time into it regardless. Okay, and this is one that I ordered from Germany. Uh, this, this one took a while to get, but uh, I don't blame them because the you know postal service sometimes is hit or miss, but I mean, I got a record from Germany, if you guys remember, I bought Amendul's first record uh, from Germany and I got it in like nine days, which is crazy fast for overseas. Uh, this one took about two weeks, maybe a little more uh, for this one. This is Herda Linz Traum, I think you, how you pronounce it. What a graphic art. <laughs> Just gotta take your time and if you see something, don't leave it in the comments section, I already know. So. <laughs> Now this is one I've been uh, after for quite a while myself, and uh, this is a original copy on Hill's label. Got the negative photo shoot there of the front sleeve. Uh, I think this is a one-off, pretty sure. This came out in 72, and I'm gonna have a little footage of the band back in the day in the intro of this video, so you guys can see. And that's probably my favorite track too. I think it's called Requiem of a Dream, maybe? I think it's, yeah, because it's all sung in German, so I, uh, I'm i not very fluent on my German, but regardless, man, this is a beautiful record. It's very much progressive psych folk. Uh, the opening and closing tracks are the most, like, accelerated tracks, you know, the most upbeat, but for the most part, very cultural, um, almost on the spiritual tip of uh, psych folk which I do tend to like quite a bit. So again, this is one I just kind of revisited, found a great deal on this and had to pop on it. Um, I do like, you know, I do love German labels like Pills. This has also got a couple members of Brussels Machine, another record I own, love that label. Um, yeah, it's a very collectible label, and 
I don't know. I feel like this one's kind of slept on yet. People just don't talk about it like Russell Machine or, you know, trees among those uh, progressive folk acts at the time. So, uh, yeah, just check this one out. This is highly recommended. Okay, I got two more here. These two I found at Vintage Vinyl here in Lincoln. And uh, usually, uh, the dude's very good about, you know, DMing me some records that might be at my wheelhouse. And somehow, man, I, I'm so glad I stopped in there two weekends ago because uh, I've been looking for a copy and uh, he did not send this my way. And I was like, dude, I've been looking for this. This is uh, Stark Naked. And funny enough, um, I'm cosmically synced with Cosmic Brian over at Cosmic Vinyl. Uh, he picked up a copy of this, I think sealed, or it was like near mint condition, I forget now. Uh, much cleaner copy than this one, but um, yeah, we were kind of synced on on uh, acquiring this one. And uh, these copies of this are pretty relatively cheap for what this is, man. I mean, I could see this being like a $150 record, and I got this for 20 bucks with trade. And, uh, you know, the cover's a little worn. It's one of those... Uh, KWLN records that have been dropping in and even though the uh, record itself looks pretty scuffed it plays man it's, it's a very strong player and this is amazing this is right right where I love to be musically um, just look at that artwork too that embossed sleeve that embossed artwork it's a Dinoflex on RCA but musically, uh, it's very almost like cryptic, kind of haunting hard rock. But it, of course, it's naturally got these post-60s psychedelic flourishes about it that I love. It's got a lot of nasty sounding fuzz guitar, very dark in spots. Uh, the track Sins on side one, that concludes the side, is definitely my favorite track. I mean, that solo is just so nasty and menacing and... It's just got all these like swirling delay effects on it and oh my god it's like super over the top that it's just like perfect for me <laughs> and funny enough i mean that was this that was the plug single that got released by rca of all tracks uh but there are you know maybe a couple ballady like tracks but they they don't stay there for too long i mean they definitely keep the progressive rock edge going and there's only six tracks, and you know most of them are pretty lengthy, and they uh, they jam out, man. Apparently, they had another uh, record in the works at this time in '71, but I think RCA dropped the label on them, and I think I think it's one of those cases, of course, like a lot of bands. I mean, they get kind of screwed over by record labels, producers, and they just uh, didn't promote the band at all. And I, I guess I heard they. Had a bunch of stage antics or stage acts while they perform live so it's kind of kind of neat to note which we had some footage of that and then finally i just decided to drop in there yesterday and i picked this one up this is um one i did not expect was there i mean it's one of those records i always hear about and i always see the cover art online not just this one but the uk sleeve which i'll probably drop in over here somewhere but this is Peter Barden's The Answer on Verb Forecast. This is a U.S. pressing. I also got this with some trade. Um, it's got a DJ Not For Sale sticker on the back. It's a promotional copy. This is one where I definitely needed to familiarize myself a little more with this. Um, I figured maybe it was kind of like a singer-songwriter uh, folky type stuff, but Definitely surpassed my expectations, though. This is uh, a little more on the jammy, uh, progressive hard rock side, maybe. Um, not so much hard rock, but uh, Peter Green is featured in here. He's got an uncredited, he's uncredited in this. And he's had some connections with like Mick Fleetwood, Ray Davies at the Kinks, and, you know, Rod Stewart, Van Morrison. He was uh, in the band Them for a short time. Bardens and so he's had a lot of like great connections you know to lead up to this solo effort and 
he's had maybe a few other records over, over the years throughout the 70s and he would eventually go on to uh, form with Camel, the UK progressive rock band. And this has got six tracks as well. And listening to this for the first time, I can definitely say this is uh, probably going to be a keeper for a while. Um, like I said, uh, very much on the jammy side, there are some bluesy moments that are, you know, kind of in your face. But at the same time, the way they perform these tracks is so unconventional and like, you know, a little bit on the, uh, you know, like they were definitely boozing while these sessions were going. You can definitely tell they're having fun with these sessions. So just on that little, you know, niche about it kind of makes it interesting for me. And the, uh, the last track on here, Homage to the God of Light, Bardens would bring that track back and he would perform that with Camel. I think like uh, maybe by the time their third album came about. So he would bring that back and they would perform that live. So yeah, um, pretty solid. Is it essential? Maybe not, but definitely worth checking out if you spot it for 10 bucks or so, the US pressing. I think the uh, UK pressing is a lot more valuable since it's got, you know, it's kind of got more of a sexy looking cover and looks like they're just a bunch of outtakes from the Electric Ladyland sessions, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that about does it. And don't have anything else come in the mail. I'm watching something on eBay that I'm interested in. And I made a few sales lately, so hopefully I can acquire this on the bid. We sure hope so. And uh, that about does it. Just uh, kind of chilling out this weekend. And uh, till then, see you soon.